Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I thought I'd do you a video on what a lot of people are expecting or hoping for, which is the first part of my story. Uh, welcome to the new subscribers to my channel. Um, it's nice to see you and I hope this helps you. Um, my first part won't be particularly intricate or particularly long. Um, in all fairness, I don't know, I can't remember a lot about it, in all fairness. Um, so let's kick it off. I was born on the 8th of April, 1987, in a place called Port Hill, um, which is part of Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire, in the UK. Um, and I lived there, I believe, till four, till I was four years old. Um, and then I moved, then we moved into a shop and ran a business for a few, quite a few years. Um, or my parents did. Um, as far as I was concerned, um, when I turned 18 months old, I was playing ball in the backyard and my dad recognised something was amiss. Um, I wasn't altogether coordinated or... Uh, he hasn't really spoke about it to be fair. Um, all I know is some, he saw something that he knew wasn't right. So he decided to get me into the doctors um, to find out what it was. And I was diagnosed with a condition called dyspraxia, which is D-Y-S-P-R-A-X-I-A. -A. And it's all to do with coordination, balance and basically the main brainstem. Um, it's a very complicated uh, condition to describe. It's best off seeing it. Um, once you've seen it, it comes apparent as to how it affects me. Uh, it's a very awkward, very, very awkward condition to explain. Um, basically for me, it it's my main brainstem. Um, when it splits, your right controls your left, your left controls your right. Well, mine's only partially split. So things like directions, um, a couple of sporting issues regarding soccer-wise, um, especially for me, as I'm a semi-pro goalkeeper, or was. Um, things like directions, um, certain particular parts are quite complicated for me at times. Um, like I say, it's best seen rather than speaking of. Um, I was told I'd never drive. I was told I'd never... Basically, I'd never get very far. Um, but <laughs> it's a, it's a double-edged sword for me because I've never let it stop me but as far as my development's gone I've been held back by my parents massively um Both of them saw, rather than disability, both of them saw disabled. So I was held back, certainly as a youngster, uh, I was held back a lot. Um, I was really held back as far as mixing with anybody, 
uh, going out anywhere. Um, plus, the schoolwork was a lot, a lot more difficult for me. Um, not so much in the work itself, but in regards to um, completing the work on time, uh, speed of work, that was hampered massively. Um, the biggest thing I can remember as far as my primary school work goes, um, and in all fairness, my primary school was excellent. Um, my primary school I went to, well, the first one I went to was Mary Church Primary School. Um, may I throw in now that within the first 12 years of my life, I moved seven times around Stoke on Trent. Um, some of them were due to the business we ran, or my parents ran. Um, and some of them were due to finance. I don't know the whole story, so I'm not going to go into it. Um, coming back to schooling, uh, as far as primary school went, uh, like I say, my primary school or my primary schools were top class. Um, one. So say Mary Church even tried to help my speed. Um, plus, I suffer as a side effect to my disability of um, mirror image. Um, easiest way to describe that is if you're cooking and you've got a pan on the boil with, I don't know, carrots or sprouts or something like that, and you went to tip it out, um, it would be exactly, instead of tipping them separately, I tipped the whole lot because I couldn't separate two actions. And that's where, that's how my mirror image worked. Um, it didn't really affect me particularly. Um, if anything, it was an advantage, if anything. I used it as an advantage. Um, PSA me disability, I use that as advantage as well. Yeah, it made things ten times harder, but f to be all honest, it wasn't really an issue for me. Um, my school, my primary school, tried to quell my mirror image slightly um, by when I was writing sort of an English thing or a spelling test or anything sort of book wise um, they did try once by taping my left hand to the table to see if it would quell the mirror image over time um, which failed um, but at least they give it a try. I was quite willing to try it. Um, I only know snippets of my young or younger life. Um, like I say, I was bounced around. We bounced around Stoke on Trent for quite a number of times. Um, which didn't help me socially, didn't help me to settle in anywhere. Um, I went to two different primary schools. Uh, one being Mary Church, like I mentioned, and the other one being Dresden. Um, or as I said, Longton. Or as I used to call it, Longton. Um, again, um, they were top class, they were top quality. Um, as far as friendships wise go, uh, I had a few friends, 
Um, I had a few more friends than later on. Um, then in parts two and three. <sighs> but you'll understand why about that when I get to them. Um, I loved Dresden. Dresden was the favourite part of me growing up. Um, I love Dresden to pieces. Um, I had so much fun as a youngster growing up there. Um, both socially and schooling. Um, they were a massive help schooling for me. Um, when I finished my primary school, which was uh, I think it was the summer of ninety. I think it was the summer of ninety nine. I believe. I think it was June of ninety nine. Um, no, sorry, it's a lie. It was June of ninety eight because I did a year in Enzo. Um, in Enzo High School, which isn't there now. Um, that isn't there at all now. As soon as I got up to Enzo High School, things started to unravel quite dramatically for me. Um, The first year there was just utter crap. Um, hardly any help. <laughs> Excuse me. Hardly any help. Um, <laughs> misgraded. Um, it was just sheer crap in there. Um, the school were held just short of 1900. Um, so you can tell how supportive they were as far as disability goes. It was a case of fit in or you're on your own, pretty much. Um, I went from second tier in primary to bottom tier in high school. Um, certainly over certainly in Stoke on Trent, I was on bottom tier. I was graded ENF. Um, I think the highest grade I got was science, which was an E. The rest were sort of Fs and anywhere sort of low E. E minus F, that sort of area. Um, <clears throat> so it worked out that my parents closed the business we were running uh, and had to, and my dad found employment somewhere else, which happened to be South Cheshire. So in June of 99, well, we were, yeah, June of 99, uh, well, May of 99, actually, we moved from stoke on to South Cheshire. Um, and things, <laughs> let's just say things went to pot very quickly, as far as I was concerned. Um, by this time, By the time I'd finished high school, parents had started to slowly unravel. The relationship had slowly started to unravel. Um, they tried to hide it from the best they could, failed miserably. But I never let on. I was 
too young to land on, to be fair. Um, and throwing in as well a side effect of my disability. I've never been diagnosed with it, but in experience of what I've been through, my real age is 33, but I perceive my mental age to be around about the 28, 29 mark. But I've never been diagnosed with it. It's just from experience of certain things. Um, a case in point will be for the next video, which will be part two of the story. Um, I won't go any, into any more detail, uh, timeline wise, in part one. Uh, I will leave it when, to when I've moved into Cheshire. Um, but coming back to Stoke on Trent, um, I've got a few friends. I mean, the only social life really I had at the time was soccer slash football. Um, I lived and breathed it for years. Um, I pretty much dedicated myself to football, pretty much. Um, if I was outside, I'd either have some sort of sport equipment in my hand, or something energetic-wise in my hand. I'd always look to be doing something. I was never one of them that sat down, twiddly thumbs, um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't stuck in reading a book or anything like that. Um, I mean, the la <laughs> funny thing is, the last book that I actually read fully, um, was the National, was the English Dictionary. It was the Oxford English Dictionary. That was the last book I read. That was not properly. Um, that was the last proper book I read for, <laughs> for an English spelling test when I was eight. That was the last book I fully read. Um, I just, like I said before, I only know snippets from my first part. Um, I mean, I was always, my parents always cared for me, I was always fed, I was looked after. But as far as support wise go, either hobby support or mainly hobby support. Um, do a bottom tier as far as that went um, if I wanted to try something I'd always get the knock back of what do you want to do that for or why do you want to go down that road um, more towards when I was transitioning from primary school to high school that come into it. Not so much primary school because I was too young really to know, to particularly know what I wanted. So they just kind of say, oh, it's only a phase, you know, and they just play through it with me. Um, but as far as my soccer went, um, they knew I was serious about it. They knew I really wanted to see where I could go. But they weren't prepared to help me. And being self-taught can only get you so far. You need that little bit extra to push you over the line. And I just never got it. You need that bit more family support to push you over the line. I never got it. Um, for me, either of them. Um, I just never got it. 
Um, so, as far as caring for me goes, I mean, I was always fed, I was always looked after, um, I was never forgotten about, I was never shoved to one side, um, I enjoyed my young, I enjoyed growing up, um, I just never got the help when I needed it, which coming on to parts later on uh, will become very evident as to the effect that that had on me. Um, it was a very awkward growing up, very, very awkward. Um, because um, socially wise I was held back so far that I was always playing catch up uh, I was always playing catch up to social activities um, so to get where I've gotten as I stated in previous videos I am proud of myself for it but at the same point I could have gone that one step further and it just never happened um, which has taken a lot out of me over the years which will be more evident in later on parts um, so for there I will call it at that um, I hope that some people some of my subscribers can relate to some things I've been on about today. Um, if you enjoyed it, leave a comment. Uh, please subscribe if you're a new watcher. And I'll catch you later. See you folks. Bye.